seated. And will you please open your pew Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, page 917 in your pew Bibles, unless you have a large print, and I believe it's page 56 in the New Testament. We are in the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter. We will read the first six verses. And if you are ready to hear the word of the Lord, will you please say amen? Amen. He left that place. Jesus is the one who left the place. And he came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogues, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could not, and he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. That's all he could do. Only cure a few people. And he was amazed at their unbelief. The word of God for the people of God. Let's join in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you and we praise you for bringing us here. And now, Lord God, we ask you to bless the words of our mouths the meditations of our hearts, and every thought that crosses our minds so that, Lord God, all that we do and all that we are can be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Through Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. When Jesus returned to his hometown of Nazareth, many were astounded. His teachings were full of wisdom, and he grabbed the attention of Everyone. The second that they heard him speak, he had their full, undivided attention. But some people started wondering where he gained all of this wisdom. Others started pointing out who his family was. His family was all average people. They were there among him. Some of them were even considered lower class. And they just did not see how it was possible for someone to come from that family and to have learned so much wisdom in such a short period of time. There were negative antagonists there in the land of Nazareth, and they led the crowd to begin to doubt Jesus so much that they ended up pushing him out of the land. They were spewing negative words. There were just a few people that started spewing negative words until all of that negative energy ended up limiting Jesus' power. Can you believe that there was so much negative energy stirring around that they ended up limiting Jesus' power? Jesus could do no deed of power in his hometown except for cure a few people. Now, if you or I could go around curing a few people, that would be pretty magnificent. But for the Son of God, that was absolutely nothing. Jesus, the Son of God, was restricted in his power because of all of the negative energy that stirred around him. Now, it seems to me that this world is more of a spiritual place than we sometimes understand. And negative energy has power. Just like prayer and positive energy have power, negative energy also has power, but in a completely demeaning way. Have you ever been around someone who is always negative? Yes? I think many of us have. You get around someone who is always negative and they don't see the good in anything, they only see the bad, they complain about everything and everyone, but then one unfortunate thing happens. The longer that we stay around these negative people, sometimes we find ourselves joining in. Has anyone ever done that? 
you're with somebody and you might love this person even though they're negative and they're always talking about stuff so so horribly and you're with them and then all of a sudden you find yourself doing the same thing. You find yourself joining in in the same complaints that they're complaining about. I know it happens. It's even happened to me and I consider myself an eternal optimist. It happens to us all. And that's what happened in the land of Nazareth. That's what happened in Jesus' hometown. Negativity was contagious. And it was so contagious that it spread like wildfire until it chased Jesus right out of town. And now the truth is that no matter how much we love the Lord, even we can be plagued by negativity if we let it get a hold of us. Can anyone here admit to ever being plagued with negativity? Mm -hmm. It's happened to me, I'll admit it. When we are around people like that, the negativity becomes contagious. But what's the opposite of negativity? Positivity. And I can say that in this church, for example, we have many positive people. We have people who have smiles on their faces even when they're going through the worst of times. We have people who just amaze me by their positive energy every single day because we have people here who trust in God and don't participate in any negative talk ever. And I know that because those people that are here in this church are role models even for me. Which is why it's so important that all of us come to church every Sunday and surround ourselves by positive people who love the Lord and who love us. It's important because we can surround ourselves by people who understand God's love and who shun those negative forms of talk. Now there is one very wonderful saying that I love that many of you have probably heard. It's the saying that the church is a hospital for sinners and not a museum for saints. Anybody here heard that saying? Yeah? You have it? The church is a hospital for sinners, not a museum for saints. I love that. It's always been one of my favorite one sayings because it's so true. Now that saying was penned by the original Dear Abby, whose name was Pauline Phillips. She wrote that years ago when she hit the nail on the head. The church is a hospital for sinners. Now I'm not using that word sin to pull us down. It's just the truth. We all have faults. And the church is a hospital for sinners because none of us are perfect. None of us are saints. We all sin and we all come to, sun to church on Sunday morning to receive spiritual healing. We come to church on Sunday morning to worship our God and to receive healing so that we can prepare ourselves to face another week in this world. But in a hospital for sinners, we also all come here with our own faults. Just because we come to church on Sunday morning does not make us perfect. That's why we're not a museum for saints. We all come to church on Sunday morning with our own faults. And sometimes even we come to church with the fault of negativity. It happens. Sometimes even we come to church with that fault. We have been so influenced by all the negative Nancys out there in the world that suddenly we start to see the world through darkened lenses also. That happens to us. It's true because we are a hospital for sinners. And when we come to church, we sometimes have a hard time ditching those dark lenses. <coughs> well, this week, in this Hospital for Sinners, also known as Zion United Church of Christ, we have a very important lesson from God. Now, I love when I open up the Bible, when I open up the scriptures, and I see a clear, concise lesson from God. That just gets me so excited because I know that I can learn something at that moment. And this week, we have a very clear, concise message from God. When Jesus arrived in his hometown... Many were thrilled to see him. Just imagine if you went back to your hometown. I know when I do it, people get excited. Sometimes people who I don't even know remember me from when I was a kid, and they get excited to see me. That's how it works. When you go to your hometown, people are excited to see you. And this was even more than that, because this was Jesus, and everybody knew who Jesus was. Everybody had heard about Jesus, and he had come to his hometown, and so many were thrilled to see him. So many were thrilled, it 
except for a few. It only takes a few. So many were thrilled except for just a few negative Nancys. Now I can't help but wonder who the original negative Nancy was. I wonder if her name really was Nancy. But there were a few people just like that. And when Jesus arrived, those negative Nancys began to talk, and I imagine that they talked and they talked and they talked. They started with that, who does he think he is attitude? Anybody know someone like that? Oh yeah, they put their hands on their hips and they tilt their head. Oh, who does he think that he is? They started pointing out the faults of his family. You know, his dad was just a carpenter. I heard that his dad isn't really even his dad. Oh, and his sisters, I've seen them around town. They're no saints. Oh, I'm sure that they began to talk and they began to talk until suddenly the entire crowd of people in Nazareth was fueled with negative energy and there was no turning back. Friends, that's how it works. Once negative energy gets out there, unless somebody intentionally stops it, when negative energy gets out there, it spreads and it spreads and it spreads like wild, a wildfire. Now, I kind of feel bad using that term wildfire because I know we are all praying for those wildfires to stop today, which we can pray for as well. But that's what happens. Once the negativity is fueled, it spreads like now let me ask everyone here, this is a simple message, do we want to be like the people of Nazareth? We're going to ask that question one more time. <laughs> Nazareth is Jesus' hometown, that's what I'm talking about. Do we, the people of Zion, United Church of Christ, want to be like the people of Nazareth? No. <laughs> okay, let me ask something else. Can somebody tell me what was the greatest commandment? Almost. That's the second. That's my next question. First is, love God. And then what's the second greatest commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two greatest commandments. But do you know that Jesus adds a third greatest commandment to that when he's talking to his disciples? Did you know that? A little lesson today. He added a third greatest commandment. Does anybody know what that third greatest commandment is? He says, love each other. He says, just as I love you, love one another. And now in all of this love that Jesus tells us about, is there any room for negativity? Oh. Wonderful answer. There is no room for negativity, not anywhere in the church of Jesus Christ. But Jesus knows that this world is a tough place to live in. He knows that negativity runs rampant in our lives, and he knows that for us, the church of Jesus Christ, to thrive and to live, that we need the love of God, the love of each other, and the love of all of our neighbors, and he knows that we need to love them in return in order for us to receive their love. Because God knows that when we leave these church doors, the second that the service is over, and we go out into the world, when we face people Monday <coughs> through Saturday, we experience negativity more often than we would like to ever experience in our lives. I have heard, of, heard about workplace stories when you have people in the workplace who are just so full of negativity that you can't wait to run out that door the second that work is over, and you can't wait to get to church on Sunday morning to be filled with more positive energy because that negative, those <coughs> negative people have simply weighed you down. Now we need to know, because of all that, we need to know that the second that we walk into those church doors on Sunday morning, all of us, every single person here, every single person who will ever walk into this church needs to know that the second that we walk in through those doors, we are loved unconditionally. That's the message that we have to get across to each and every single one of us. The second that we walk through those doors, we all need to know that we are all loved unconditionally. We are loved by God, and we are loved by each other. Can anyone agree to that? Amen. Okay, so I just kind of went a little off track. I want to make sure that this is a clear and concise message. So let me ask you a couple more questions. This is kind of a quiz sermon. I have no idea why. But this is a quiz sermon. So... What was it in Nazareth that decreased the power of Jesus? Such a smart group. Now, 
do we desire to be like the people of Nazareth or the disciples? Thank you. Are we a hospital for sinners or a museum for saints? Such a smart group. In this hospital for sinners, do we allow any negativity? We try not to, but we're going to just go with a solid no. Do we say anything about anyone that is not uplifting or encouraging? No. No, we're going to ask that one more time. Do we say anything about anyone that is not uplifting or positive? No. When we leave these doors and when we're out there in the world, Monday through Saturday, do we participate in any talk, whether it's in the workplace or out in the world, that has any form of negativity in it? No. You guys just preached your own message. I didn't even have to do it. You guys just all preached your own message, and that's what God wants us to hear today. This lesson is not complicated. Sometimes we open the Bible and there's some pretty complicated things. I admit it. This lesson is not one of them. This is one of the most clear and concise lessons that we can find in the Gospels. And friends, this lesson is one that God wants to bless us with this morning. Because negative energy has a power. We've learned that today in this message. Negative energy has a power and that energy is completely opposed to God. Negative energy is completely opposed to God, which is why we can have absolutely nothing to do with it. And it's that same negative energy that limited the power of Jesus, and that's why it has no place in our lives. But we're not going to end there, because if we end there, we'll end on a negative note, won't we? We can't do that, can we? No, we just learned a pretty good, a pretty good message. We, we, can't learn, we can't end with negativity. So instead, we need to end with positivity. And the thing that we have to learn is that when we come into this church on Sunday morning or any time that we set aside to worship God, there is always room for positive healing. Because if neg negative energy has power, what has even more power? Positive energy. Because positive energy comes straight from God. Which means that when we come here on Sunday morning, when we come to worship God, we can be filled with that positive energy, and that's what we need to do. We can be filled with that positive energy through the love of God, through the forgiveness of God, through the love of each other, and through the forgiveness of each other. That's what matters. When we love one another, like really, when you see somebody and you just have a smile that lights up the second you see them, when we really want to be here with one another, when we truly love one another, no matter who we are or what we've done or how rich or poor or short or tall or, or anything we are, when we love each other no matter what, that fills us with positive energy which can heal us in the most amazing ways. So that's what we need to learn this week. We are all about positivity and not at all about negativity, which means that we don't say a single unkind word about anyone. Now, I know more of our youth are going to come. They will be here, I promise, for the car wash, of course. But sometimes when we're in youth group, we sit right up here and I give them a little thing to work on. I know I've told you that before. But I want to give everyone here something to work on. Within the rest of the month of July, I was thinking just a week, just until next Sunday, but honestly, that's not enough time. For the rest of the month of July, think of it as your, your uh, 4th of July workshop. For the rest of the month of July, we all have one thing to work on, and we can support each other in this. None of us, not a single person here in this church, will say anything negative about anyone. Can we do that? Whoa, let's ask that again. I know I'm pushing you, but we're going to do this. This means not in church and not outside of church, and we know that outside of church gets a lot harder. That means that we are all going to pledge for the rest of the month of July to not say anything negative about anyone. Can we all participate in that? Yes. I heard some. We're going to ask that again. Can we all do that? Yes. Can we all do that? Yes. Okay, because friends, if we can all do that, if we can all be filled with such positive energy just for the month of July, when August comes around, 
we will never desire to say a negative word about anybody. If you do have some real negative word that's on your heart, you can come to me and you can tell me about it and we'll pray about it. And I hope I don't have a long line at my door. But I think that if we can make it through July saying only positive things about each other, only uplifting things about each other, then this church will never be like Nazareth. This church will be the most loving place full of spiritual healing, full of the presence of the Holy Spirit, and everyone will want to gather here together with us because we are truly a community of love, and that's what I think we can do, and I'm going to hold every single person in this church, including myself, to this July challenge, and I want you to all hold me to this too. Okay? If you hear anything, even in a sermon, if I say anything negative about anybody in a sermon through the month of July, just raise your hand. Say, hey, stop right there. We are all going to hold each other to this because, friends, we don't want to be like Nazareth. Because Nazareth pushed Jesus out of town. We don't want to be like that. We want to be like the disciples, minus Judas, who were so loving and who started the church of Jesus Christ. And I think we can do that. I know we can do that. So let's pray. Gracious God, you are a God of love and a God of forgiveness, and you give us messages that are so powerful and clear, because all we have to do is read those first six, six verses, and, and we find out something amazing about Jesus. We find out that negative energy has power, but that positive energy is even greater. So, Lord God, we are pledging to you. We are promising to you on this day that none of us will say a negative word about anyone. We are all making that promise to you. We are going to hold each other accountable because, Lord God, we know that you are always positive and encouraging and loving. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, Heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debtors, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.